First at four, I'm Sean Lay, live at Children's Hospital. The very latest on that wild Amber Alert. 14-day-old twins abducted, just released from Children's Hospital to their parents. Exclusive video of the arrest made in the case and what the baby's father is telling me. First at four, Karen. All right, thanks, Sean. Detroit teachers announced a tentative contract agreement just eight days before school starts. We're going to tell you what happens next and when we'll know if it's a done deal. And good afternoon, Mount Clemens. There is a little bit of everything in your forewarned forecast. Chances for rain and a possible heat record. Your top stories and weather first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it started with that Amber Alert buzzing phones all over Metro Detroit this morning. Right now, we do know the twin baby boys are safe. Two people have been taken into custody, but there are still so many questions about what happened and why. Sean Lay outside of Children's Hospital with the latest and also some exclusive video. Sean. Let's talk right about that. First of all, the twins just came out of here 14 days old in the arms and car carriers of mom and dad. They left so relieved more about mom and dad and those twins in a moment. You mentioned exclusive video. Yes, at the ninth precinct, someone brought those twins in 12 hours after our phones went off for that Amber Alert, handed them over to police. Then after police made an announcement of that, we go behind the precinct to see two people being taken into custody by Livonia police. Police say they'll update us on that as soon as they can as they investigate. First, let's break all this down for you. We're talking about twins abducted overnight and then returned to police and the parents hours later. Take a look. As you can imagine, the entire precinct was on high alert. Uh, we got the same Amber Alert that you all had or got. And uh, so to see them walk in with the, the, with the two babies, we're all very, very happy. Uh, but then we have to get into make sure that they're OK and get them to the hospital. So the officers went right into that mode, quickly getting them over to the hospital. Uh, to make sure that they were treated and in and, uh, and, and good condition. Only local four cameras are there behind the Detroit Police 9th Precinct as we watch this. Livonia Police taking this man into custody along with this woman. You can see her already in the back of a Livonia Police Cruiser. The two were arrested by the Livonia Police two and a half hours after people walked into the precinct on Gratiot on the city's east side and handed over twin baby boys just 14 days old after a frantic Amber Alert search for them since 1010 10 last night. That's when police say the twins were taken by two women from the Quality Inn in Livonia. The twins' mother calling 911. The twins' mother apparently leaving the newborns in their hotel room while she stepped out for a moment. The two women described as acquaintances that allegedly left with those babies. Who are the women who abducted the babies, who brought them to the 9th Precinct? The lady left them with uh, two friends, and when she came back, they were gone. They're and friends? I'm going to leave that. They were friendly acquaintances. When did they, so had that's they just met pretty much that all I can say at this point, because we're still trying to figure out exactly what happened and why they disappeared to begin with. We have questions about all this, been digging for those answers to the questions all day on this, Karen. Listen, I can tell you, I just interviewed the father of one of the twins right next to him, the mother of the twins holding them inside Children's Hospital. It was just so small, they checked out just fine medically. And dad is describing exactly what mom and her mom is describing, that they connected with people on Facebook, offering them help. Saying there was a, It was a mom's group. And mom said, hey, we just had twins, people offering help, diapers, gift cards, wipes, things of that nature. They somehow connected, and that, what's, that is what led to this abduction and Amber Alert. Amber Alert's canceled. The kids are just fine. Coming up, though, at 5 o'clock, we just interviewed dad. You've got to see how relieved he is and describe how they met these people and how they ended up not having their babies for 12 hours. Wow. That's at five, back to you. All right, looking yeah. forward to that interview with the father and so, so thankful the twins are okay. Thank you, Sean. That's Detroit police say one person is in custody connected to the shooting death of an eight-year-old on the city's west side. So far though, no charges. The shooting happened about 1030 Saturday night on Ward Street between Midland and Pilgrim. Today, Chief White called this another tragic case. He says the adult responsible for the gun is in custody this afternoon, is not related to the little boy. He also says there are some unanswered questions. We don't know exactly what transpired once the weapon was found. Uh, we're confident that um, it was an unsecure weapon that led to this tragedy. And we, we're always here talking about this. If you're going to have a gun yeah, and you're going to be a gun owner, you have to be responsible. And unfortunately, we have a yet another situation where one of Detroit's children has been killed 
because an adult made a horrible decision to leave the gun unsecured. So the chief says the investigation is ongoing. New at 5, our Victor Williams will have an update. He's also talking with a man who tried to save the little boy's life. And we'll have that part of the story when you join us at 5. Meantime, in about an hour, Detroit public school teachers are set to learn more about a tentative contract agreement with the district. The union membership will be having a big Zoom meeting at 5 p.m. one day after the deal was announced. Meantime, teachers have started going back to work today to get ready for the first day of classes on August 28th. Voting on the new contract will start after tonight's meeting and then will end Thursday at noon. Michigan's head football coach will apparently miss the first three games of the season. Multiple sources are reporting the university has voluntarily suspended Jim Harbaugh. The NCAA recently rejected a negotiated four game suspension during an investigation for recruiting violations. Now that process continues, but U of M hopes that this suspension might head off further penalties. Now we did reach out to the university. Uh, Bernie Smilovitz will have an update for us when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Let's check in on that first forecast. Ron Hilliard in for Kim Adams today, and it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous Monday evening ahead. It is looking very nice out there, Karen. Beautiful weather, but it is humid out there. Now, we do have some cloud cover that is uh, a little bit more than what we had over the weekend with all that sunshine. Right now, it's 81 degrees, so we are slightly cooler than we were yesterday. 79 right now popping up in Howell and Pontiac, 82 in Adrian. So it feels slightly warmer when you factor in that humidity. The heat index bumps up to around 84 as you get into Ann Arbor, 87 in Adrian. So certainly feeling a little bit warmer out there across the area. Things are looking pretty good besides the cloud cover we have, but we are still watching the impacts of what is left over from at one point, Hurricane Hillary, and then it was downgraded, of course, to Tropical Storm Hillary, and now it's simply the remnants of Hillary now swirling through the San Francisco Bay Area. So they are being impacted by heavy rains that is now going up toward Northern California. We have our own chances of rain right here in Southeast Michigan. That's all coming up. All right, thanks, Ron. Mother Nature certainly made it a rough weekend up and down the West Coast. As you said, there was the tropical storm, an earthquake, and fires in Washington State. Now, you just heard Hillary has weakened. But take a look at the flooding in Palm Springs. That city could get 6 to 10 inches of rain from that storm. It normally gets less than 5 inches in a year. Meantime, wildfires are raging near Spokane, Washington. Thousands of people forced to evacuate. Kimberly Gill joins us now with more on this story. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. It is very rare for the southwestern United States to be dealing with this much rain. Residents were put on alert to be aware of flooding and debris, and that's what they got. NBC cameras have been showing us the destruction left behind. Trees pulled out of the ground, roads buckling and rocks falling. On top of all that, you've probably heard there was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake on Sunday. Luckily, it did not do any serious damage. Hillary's impact, though, has pushed into a handful of other states. Officials in Clark County, Nevada, declared a state of emergency there. Heavy rains poured into Las Vegas, flooding some casino parking areas. Some residents to the west of the city were told to shelter in place today thanks to the risk of more flooding. The National Guard was also activated to help out in a town called Mount Charleston. At the same time, a pair of wildfires leaving a path of destruction in the state of Washington. The so-called Gray Fire has burned more than 10,000 acres, while the Elk Fire is said to be even more volatile and active. Together, the fires have destroyed nearly 200 buildings since they first started Friday. Uh, there has been a chance of rain in the forecast, which has many hoping that will help get the fires under control. So, uh, Karen, we're keeping a close eye on all of this. In particular, we have an update on the situation in California when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Wild weather for sure. It really is, yeah. yeah. All right, thank you, Ken. Sure. Well, President Joe Biden and the First Lady will be arriving in Hawaii in about an hour. Right now, they are flying from Reno, Nevada to Maui. The first couple was on vacation in Lake Tahoe, but they're putting that on pause to meet with wildfire victims and to check on relief efforts following the deadly and destructive wildfires. The president is expected to name a new regional FEMA coordinator to cover the government's response. A new product, or should say project, is underway at the DeQuinder Cut, and it's highlighting Michigan's wildlife. It's one of the stories that we're covering in your community this afternoon. Local Forest Will Jones introduces us to the artist and tells us how you'll be able to watch the project as it takes shape. The DeQuinder Cut is an oasis within the city. The Cut is one of these special places, right, where we're in the middle and the heart of the city, uh, but 
For around me right now, all you can see is trees. And if you come here to be lost in nature, you're going to love more of what you see. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy and the Michigan Wildlife Council are partnering to create a series of eight artistic panels as part of a unique mural of Michigan managed wildlife, a way to celebrate the state's outdoors and conservation efforts. A lot of people don't think when we when we talk about wildlife, um, sometimes it doesn't connect with with local wildlife in Michigan, and so we're just trying to highlight some of those species. Ed Ehrman has been commissioned for the project. It will be completed in time for the Harvest Fest, which is set to start on August 7th at the Jaquinder Cut. I find it to be an incredible opportunity to put some awareness on the wildlife of Michigan. I think Detroit is a very interesting place because we do have a lot of green space and some of the animals that I am painting occupy those spaces. For those who frequent the cut, breaking a sweat is made easier with art on display. Having the artwork when you're walking, I mean, it just, it gives focus to something different. This space was a space, was a place where people and graffiti artists used to come before it became a trail. So we really try to honor that by continuing this tradition of mural paintings uh, up and down the cut. Some of the wildlife feature will be a sturgeon, porcupine, pheasant, and monarch butterflies. The sturgeon and porcupine are already up, by the way. The remaining species have yet to be announced. Karen, they want it to be... A surprise. Oh, I like that. Okay, so Harvest Festival, I understand then if you attend, you might be able to add to the murals? Yeah. Because that would be kind of cool. My kids would love that. <laughs> I was a little confused about it. So <laughs> right? anyone can be an artist. Yeah. There will be uh, white spaces where people can uh -huh. write messages about the mural but, or about what they like about oh. the, the Quinder Cut. So oh, you like could that. be a, an artist feature. An artist the too and a bike rider. You can do it all. <laughs> all right. We thank you very much. Thanks, Will. All right, we also have another story from Wayne County for you right now, and we're going to move a little further west. There was a ribbon cutting in Belleville for a new section of the Iron Bell Trail. The extra half mile runs from Lower Huron Metro Park up to Huron River Drive. It comes with user-friendly upgrades thanks to grants from the Michigan Natural Resources Trust Fund and also the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation. Feel free to walk, run, bike, or roll along the new portion of the trail.